All right, in this lesson, we're going to re review everything that we've looked at in, in section 6.1, if you're one of my students, or basically how do you graph linear inequalities and how does this apply to restrictions and everything that we've been doing. Big, big, big section. Uh, so here's the key ideas, is to graph a linear inequality in two variables. Here's the steps to follow. If the inequality sign, well, step number one, first of all, is to graph the boundary line of the solution region. So uh, the boundary line, I can look at a few examples here. <clears throat> we looked at how to do that. You change the inequality sign to an equal sign, and you graph the boundary line. And in order to do that, we need to find two points. My suggestion is to substitute x equals 0 into the function and get the y-intercept. Substitute y equals 0 into the function and get the x-intercept. That will give you two points. So graph your boundary line with these stipulations. One stipulation being, if the inequality sign is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, the boundary is solid because the points on the boundary are included. So once you have that line, it's going to be a solid line if it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. And vice versa, if the inequality sign is just greater than or less than, the boundary is dotted because the points on the boundary line are not included. So that is when a boundary line would be dotted. Step two. So once you have the boundary line, step two is to shade the half plane on one side of the boundary line. So one side of that boundary line will be shaded. The other side won't be. Uh, the easiest way to do that is this. Choose a test point that is on one side of the boundary. If possible, use the point 0, 0 to simplify your calculations. Then substitute the coordinates of that test point into, and here's the important thing, the original linear inequality. If the test point is a solution, shade the half plane that contains this point. Otherwise, shade the other half plane. So just a quick reminder, I'll go back up to the example that we did a long time ago in an earlier lesson. Uh, if I test 0, 0 in this original inequality, so substitute 0 in for y and 0 in for x, and see if it's true just evaluate each side. So 0 less than or equal to 4, the answer is yes, so I'd shade in the side that contains 0, 0. Or alternatively, if you look at this example when I tested 0, 0, so substituting 0, 0 into the inequality, I would ask myself, is negative 2 times 0 plus 5 times 0 greater than 10? And the answer is no. 0 is not greater than 10, so I'd shade, since I tested 0, 0, I'd shade the opposite side. Uh, so that's how we determine how to shade. So step one, graph the boundary. Step two, shade. Step three, finally, is to apply any restrictions to the solution region. So if a solution set contains all real numbers, so you might see an R, the inequality is continuous and no changes need to be applied. Two, if the solution set contains integers, so if you see an I, the inequality is discrete, which means, more importantly to the solution region, is that it needs to be stippled or dotted at integer values only. And finally, if the solution set contains only positive integers, kind of like the word problem that we saw in the previous lesson, and you see W meaning whole numbers, the inequality is discrete. And more importantly, the solution region only includes quadrant 1, or positive numbers, and needs to be stippled at integer values only. So if I look at that, sometimes you'll have restrictions, sometimes you won't. But if you look here uh, with this one, with integer values, then the solution region would just be dotted at all the integers. So that's why the i is there. So same thing here. If you have equals, or the restrictions are integers, then it would just be dotted at all the values in the solution region and not shaded. Um, and finally, if you have a w or representing whole numbers, then you just put dots in the solution region in the positive quadrant, kind of like our word problem here, because we couldn't, could only sell positive integer skis and snowboards. We just put dots in the solution region, this would be continuous, and the solution region only in the positive quadrant. And that is all.